on a really nasty day for the averages, you know what stocks managed to hang in there and actually go higher? The real estate investment trust. Now, you might think that this group would be a tough one to own given the omnipresent fear of the Fed raising interest rates. I think this whole market today was about please don't raise. That would make all of the high-yielding stocks out there less attractive, including the REITs. But if you're worried about an economic slowdown, this group starts to look a little bit like a real, a real safe haven. Take Bricksmore Property Group, the largest grocery store anchored shopping center REIT in the United States. Bountiful 3.6% yield. It rallied 1.27% today. Company owns more than 520 shopping centers, and more than 70% of those are anchored by high-quality supermarkets. You've seen these around Gigantic Kroger, or Walmart, a bunch of smaller stores built around it. Bricksmore's proven to be very good at this business. They'll buy a shopping center, then they'll try to bring in a higher-quality grocery store as a tenant, which then lets them bring in better retailers at the same site. Plus, supermarkets are the one part of retail that's still basically in, immunized against e-commerce, although we know Amazon and Instacart trying to make some headway here. Now, Bricksmore just reported a solid quarter last week, in-line revenues from uh, and funds from operations, strong property-wide occupancy rate of 92.5%, plus the average base rate on new and renewed leases increased by f- a phenomenal 26.9% year-over-year. So can Bricksmore start working its way higher in this environment? Let's check in with Michael Carroll, the CEO of Bricksmore Property Group, hear more about his company's prospects. Mr. Carroll, welcome back to Mad Money. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? Good. All right, Michael, there's an interesting line. You kind of took it right to everybody. It's July 28th, <laughs> analyst call. You said... <laughs> You said, we continue to realize that misperceptions and misunderstandings regarding our investment story permeate the Wall Street community. We're not the Wall Street community. We're the retail community. Tell the retail community what what are the misperceptions and how the truth really plays out in a different way. Sure. Well, first of all, we're an organic growth story. That's the primary focus of the company. We have a great runway in the company. It's really backed by we have just below market leases. And this quarter was a perfect example. If you look, new, new lease spreads were over 50% for the quarter. I liken it to rent control apartments in New York City. When they finally free up. When they finally free up and we bring it to market. So that's a great opportunity for us and really helps us drive revenue. And then I think lastly, just people don't understand the the quality of the grocery anchors in our center and what they really bring to it. Our our average grocery sales now are approaching $30 million per store. That's consistent traffic flow and really allows us to merchandise and lease off of those stores, uh, off of those sales. I know that there are some A&P stores that people were concerned about, and I was thinking that there's the misperception writ large. I have to believe that every one of those places can be upgraded by you yeah. and that it's actually yeah. a great opportunity. I mean, I hate to ever wish yeah. people lose their jobs because yeah. yeah. you know I both yeah. know. Well, I think the majority of those stores will be re-merchandised with better grocers. Those are great right. locations. It's a company that's been capital constrained for a long time. Those stores can be upgraded and repurposed to, to better operators. I think those would be a long-term opportunity. Um, also, I think that people don't understand that you're able to move fast and that matters. You talked about Dollar Tree and, uh, and Five Below, like instant. Instantaneously. It's one that's of the benefits of scale. Okay. We're a national landlord to all these retailers. We, we've right, taken right. the time to negotiate form leases with them. And so, you know, where we can get people open in less than 30 days, or not open, but signed in less than 30 days, and then open quickly thereafter, it's a real opportunity. Yeah, I thought this was amazing. You can't do it for a house. Pardon me? You can't close in a house yeah, that fast. Not, not so that's that very fast, interesting. No. Yep. Now, one of the things I think that people also don't understand is, is, is that there was a time when Home Depot used to open all these stores and they opened up all these different competitive malls. That, it, it's not like there are a million malls that are driving down the square footage, right? There's a limit. It's a great opportunity. We've gone from... Some, an industry where we were producing 200 million square feet a year to right. first quarter, 1.2 million square feet of new retail space in this country. So it's really a great tailwind for the business, right. and that lack of supply gives us really good pricing power. All right, speaking of supply, I think there was some concern that, uh, look, you've got a phenomenal uh, company that, that spun you off, yep. that maybe they were going to keep selling stock, but they seem to be committed to not selling below the last price. They're very focused on you know, where they see value, and they think the stock is cheap at these levels, and we don't see them as a seller here. They'd like to continue to sell at higher prices. Um, at the same time, you've got an opportunity to repay some of your high-quality debt, which is, again, going to be augmenting the organic story and bringing you more cash flow. Yes, yes. We just did a bond offering uh, just last week, 3.85% on seven-year money replacing close to 6% debt. So real opportunity for us to continue to make progress on kind of both sides of the balance sheet, the operating side of the properties and then on the on the debt stack side. Oh, well, this is the kind of growth. I love how you said that it's an organic growth story because there's a lot of companies that are just giving you a good yield like utilities with no growth. Growth and, util- and growth 
and income. Very hard to find in this market. It's Michael Carroll, CEO of Bricksmore Property Group, BRX. I think he's right. I think it is misunderstood given the, the just the strength of the operating uh, results that they can show for many years to come. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.